Hi, my name is Danielle, and welcome to my patio. I just finished reading The Last Watch by J.S. Dews a few days ago, and now that I've spent some time gathering my thoughts, I'm ready to talk to you about it. <laughs> uh, so this is the first book in the Divide series, and we, in this book we follow a group of military outcasts that are stationed at the edge of the universe, what's called the Divide. Um, and the people in this book live about a millennium in the future, and it's just a known fact during this time that the universe, um, about a millennium ago, the universe stopped expanding, and it's just stayed in place for about a millennium. This is in the synopsis of the book, so I don't think it's a spoiler. I think it's safe for me to say that during the course of this book, the edge of the universe starts to move inward. The universe starts to contract. And since our soldier criminals and outcasts are stationed right at the edge of the universe, this is kind of a problem for them. So what we get in this book is an extremely high stakes countdown as the people at the edge of the divide try to figure out, first of all, what's happening, um, why it's happening, <laughs> and they are trying to stay alive while keeping ahead of the encroaching edge of the universe. So the book has some elements of military sci-fi, obviously. There's also a bit of what I think of as magical sci-fi, <laughs> like gravity just exists in a stationary ship, um, there are warp drives that allow light speed travel, etc. Also there's aliens, so that's awesome. Uh, and there's this race of beings <laughs> that really closely resembles, and this is this is kind of a niche um, reference, but <laughs> if you happen to have played an MMO called Warframe, then you'll know of the Grineer. And there's a race in this book that are basically the Grineer. It's super fun. They're like this militant group. They're not super smart. They're all clones. They call them drudgers. Anyway. <laughs> On the back of the book, it says that The Last Watch is The Expanse meets Game of Thrones, which I don't really think fits after reading the book. Um, I would say that it's more like maybe Star Trek meets The Edge of Tomorrow, <laughs> you know, starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt, my favorite. Um, it's basically just um, ignoring some of the problems and just having a lot of fun, which totally I'm on board with that. So I guess I should probably mention the main characters. <laughs> we get the story from two different perspectives. The first I'll mention is Commander Adequin Rake. She's the commander of a really big ship that's stationed at the Divide. She's an accomplished soldier, she's respected by her crew, and she's just an all-around badass. Then we've got Cavalon, who is kind of a nerd. He's got three degrees, two of them at the PhD level. And he's also an exiled prince of an empire, so that's interesting. And I feel like the relationship between Adequin Rake and Cavalon was pretty realistic. He's like a new guy coming onto the ship, and Rake has to deal with his shenanigans, basically. <laughs> and I thought that that was done really well. I like that Rake is shown to be a good leader, but that she's not too like hard and gruff. She leads in a way that I think a really good leader will. Like she values what every crew member has to say and she values their skills and she draws on their skills a lot and delegates really well, but she's also willing to like get in there and kill some drudgers if she needs to. So that was pretty cool. Cavalon's portrayal I thought was a bit inconsistent. At the beginning of the book, he comes across as this like playboy who doesn't really care about anything or respect anything and he's just sort of messing around and getting in fights and stuff. But then a little bit later on, he kind of turns into like a, a hesitant, uncertain nerd. I still really liked him in the end. I don't think that that had much of a negative impact on the story for me, but I just thought it was sort of weird because <laughs> there's just such a shift from the beginning of the book to the end of the book with him. Uh, there's also a very small element of romance in the book. I would call it like a sub subplot. It's nothing too um, dramatic, but 
There's plenty of room for that to grow in subsequent books, but Dews doesn't spend too much time dwelling on it. I do think the romantic plot did add to the story, but it wasn't a big focus of the story. Which, when I'm reading a sci-fi, I don't want a whole lot of romance. I want big action scenes, I want cool sci-fi gadgets, and cool characters who are awesome. And you get all of that with this book. So here are my final thoughts. So this is J.S. Dew's first published novel, so there's some kind of inevitable like inconsistency and messiness here and there, some tropes that I don't love kind of scattered throughout. But overall I thought it was a really fun read. It's almost 500 pages long, it's like 470 some pages long, but I didn't find it hard to get through at all. There's so many high stakes scenarios, as you can imagine, and there's timers the characters have to work against, and lots of action scenes, like I said. This is definitely worth a read. And I think the second book is either coming out soon, or it might have just come out. And I definitely plan to read the second book. This was super fun, and totally worth the time. So let me know if you've read this book, and what you thought of it. Uh, or if you haven't read it yet, but you want to. And thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Now please enjoy this footage of my neighbor's goats. Hi! How's it going? Hey little girl! Yeah, I don't have anything for you guys. <laughs> They're devastated. Hi! I don't have any food for you either. Sorry girls. on some tropes here and there that I don't love. Um,